All right, guys, today we have a brand new video for you. Today I am upgrading my Ender 3 3D printer with the Creality Direct Drive. I'm not using the Sprite, I'm using their Direct Drive that they have, the cheaper version. This guy right here. All right, so the tools we're gonna need today, I have some canned air here. It tends to get a little dirty inside and uh, it's probably a good time to do a little bit of maintenance on here and blow some of the dust and some of the leftover little filament scraps and stuff that you may have in your printer. You're gonna need a three, a two and a half, and a two millimeter Allen. You're gonna need some zip ties, your cutters. You might need a pair of needle nose, I have them just in case. All right, so our first step is to loosen the tension and that is gonna be your three millimeter Allen. But all we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect our drive belt, it looks like this. And there's two little slots on the bottom. And we're gonna disconnect both of those from here. And we're gonna slide our belt through underneath the rollers here. And we're gonna pull this right through and get it out of the way, just like that. All right, now our next step is we need to disconnect all our wiring and whatnot. I'm gonna pull the blue clips off the Bowden tube and we're gonna disconnect from the extruder side here, just like that. And that'll allow us to remove this whole assembly. We don't need to take it off of here. And then on the back side here on this wire, right? This is why you need your cable ties. There are a bunch of cable ties on here. We're going to remove. Now what you wanna do is you wanna move your build plate back and we need to gain access to where our control board is here. Now, these screws on here are two millimeter. So there's two in the front and there's one in the back here. So with the print bed all the way forward, you can loosen this. Okay, and then we can push our print bed back all the way again. And just note, the, the screw in the back is longer than the two screws in the front. And then all you simply do now is you just slide your cover off now. You, there is a fan on here. The connector does have glue on it. So it may be hard to get this out. And this is what the main board looks like. And then we're gonna look at where our wire from the hot end came through. And it looks like it's all kind of wrapped up together. There is a zip tie on here, a cable tie on here where all the wires come in. So we're gonna have to free that up and we'll clean up the wiring after we're kind of done. And this one you want to be really careful because there's a lot of really small wires here. Um, all the wires for all the stepper motors. So you want to make sure that you're not clipping one of those wires when you cut your tie. Yeah, this one's gonna be the two mil. Now there is another zip tie in the back here you need to get to. We'll clip that. And then this is all wrapped with this like fabric tape here. But what we wanna do is we wanna disconnect our Z axis switch here and also our Z axis servo motor because that's kind of holding this whole thing from coming out here. Now, as you can see, we can pull this whole thing out. So we're gonna have to unwrap it. We can probably reuse it if not we will use some electrical tape or we'll just use zip ties. It's like a big wire burrito. All right, so we need to locate which one of these goes to our hot end. So it looks like it is this one here. All right, and I can confirm that I can see that moving. So what we need to do is we need to disconnect all of our wiring that goes to this cable. So there's another little cable tie here you wanna snip. So now you have your 24 volt wiring here. This goes to the hot end, all right? So we're gonna need a little screwdriver. I did not mention that in the beginning. Um, you do have a flathead screwdriver with your original Creality kit. The new extruder comes with one. So just pay note where um, these wires are, it's actually marked on the board, plus and minus. Red's plus, black being minus, All right? So we'll pull these two out. These two really thick red wires here are your heater. They call it a heating tube. And these are not polarity sensitive. 
All right, so there's your heater. And then it looks like we're gonna have to pick this hot glue here. I can probably just dig at this a little bit. And I don't think this is to like prevent you from doing anything in here. I think it's more to just kind of hold the connectors in place. And that should allow us to get this little 24 volt connector out here. And this is for the fan. On the hot end. And then we have one last connector here. The connector at the very last port here, this also has this glue on it, that is the thermistor. And the thermistor is basically just the temperature sensor for the hot end. Right there. So that's all there is to it. And then we can take our wire here and carefully pull that out. And now these are all the wires that we just disconnected right here. So now our hot end assembly is free to come off. If you remember when you first built your Creality Ender 3, um, you slid this whole entire Z-axis assembly down over the top. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna loosen our Allen screws on the top here, pull the top bar off. We're gonna bring this up and then I'm gonna slide it off that way. So I believe this guy is a four mil. And what we're gonna do now, just be careful with your Z-axis screw. We're gonna slide this up all the way. Make sure you don't have any wires that are catching or are gonna get torn off here. And once you get to a certain point here, you can just twist your Z-axis screw to get this off. All right, and then you wanna loosen up both of these. There are no T-nuts on these ones. These are actually directly threaded into this bar. All right. We'll take that, we'll set that aside. And then, just like that, we have our old hot end assembly off. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna mount the new extruder and hot end onto our bar here. And all you need to do, you wanna make sure that the front of it, right, looking at the front of it, you wanna make sure your orientation is correct. And all you do is you just slide the wheels over that bar, just like this, all right? and we'll attach the belt after we get this all mounted together. So what we wanna do next, we wanna lay this back down. And we wanna mount this guy back on and then tighten them up after you get them in. There are little lock washers on the back, so just make sure um, you didn't lose those when you were getting it all back together. And this is what it should look like. All right, so now that we have our new hot end mounted. We want to put our assembly back together here. So you wanna just be careful and you wanna guide your rollers from both sides here and get your Z-axis screw into the brass bushing there. And then you can just come over to the Z-axis stepper motor and just twist it. And then once it's on, you should be able to push it. It should freewheel enough where you can push it, right? So now we can mount our top bar back on. Let's get this back on. Now you may have to swap your spool holder. I actually just installed the top bar in reverse, as you can see here. I actually mounted it with the spool holder on the front instead of the back, right? We had it on the back when we were feeding the extruder on the back side. Now that our extruder's in the front here, I want my filament to pay off to the front and go directly straight down. So we'll leave that right here. We can adjust the final position, you know, when we're running the machine. This moves nice. So what we need to do now is we need to put our tensioner back on and get our drive belt back in place. There is a slot on the bottom side here. And all you do is you slide this built into that slot like that. And then we're gonna mount our tensioner, tensioner back in. And these are the T-nuts, because they're kind of shaped like a T. All right, and I'm just gonna, for now, I'm just gonna snug these by hand. So I can kind of push this into place if I need to. And we're gonna get our, drive belt 
into the slot on the other side. You want to make sure it's over the tensioner. And we're going to slide that into the slot. On this side, we're good. We're going to take our two and a half. And all I do is I kind of just, I grab the bottom of the roller and the top of the roller with my index finger and thumb. And you can almost press against this bar and get some back tension and pull it this way. You don't want it super, super tight, but you don't want it loose either. And one thing you want to make sure that roller is not rubbing against this bar here because you'll have all sorts of problems. All right, so now that we have our new extruder and hot end assembly mounted, you can cut the zip tie that comes on this here to free up your new wires. Now, your wiring is exactly the same as your old extruder that you took out. So we'll get these out of the way. Now, before um, we go to connect these up, I wanna remove the old extruder. Y you can leave it on there, but it's, it's a little added extra weight. So we're gonna remove that real quick. Now they give you an extension cable. Obviously this is not gonna reach all the way over here, but they do give you an extension cable in the kit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect this side here. The male side is gonna plug into our new extruder, right? And we're gonna put a couple zip ties on here. What we wanna do now is run our new wire back in to the main board enclosure. And we're just gonna feed that under the printer here. Now, if you remember, we had our 24 volts, which plugged into the front here, right next to this other fan connector. That one goes here. So we're gonna push that in place. Um, if you find it hard to kind of push in place, you can just use the little screwdriver that came with it and it should pop right in just like that. We're gonna hook our thermistor. And these are a key, they only fit in one direction, so if it's not going, don't force it. You don't wanna break any of the connectors and have to replace your main board. Now, our heater is next. And the heater wires went to these last two terminals here on this green contact block. What I'm actually gonna do, is I'm actually gonna disconnect this fan now that I have that glue off uh, so you can see a little bit better here All right now these aren't polarity sensitive these are for the heater these just go in here just like that don't over tighten them but definitely make sure that they're snug All right and then we have the last two 24 volt wires and the very first terminal is where the red goes and the second terminal is where the black goes. And this is for the fan for the hot end. So we're gonna lift this up here and we're gonna get our red wire in. And tug on these wires just a little bit once you get them in and you'll know um, if you got that wire in there successfully or not. All right. Uh, and this is why I suggested needle nose. These, these wires can be a little tricky sometimes, but uh, it looks like we got them all, no problem. All right, and we're gonna give them all a tug. Make sure everything's good in here. All right, so now um, we need some more zip ties. We wanna kinda try to put this back to the way it came, all right? These were all kind of bunched together right here and they had a zip tie around them all right here. So we're gonna do that. We'll rewrap this with that, that tape wrap that's there. We'll put a couple zip ties on there and get the main board enclosure all mounted back up real nice. plug our fan back in. Definitely made it easier to have this cover out of the way. So it's uh, definitely worth taking off. Now you have to remember when you go to put this on, there is a little 
kind of offset here and that's sort of wire for the Z axis axis. So the Z axis limit switch wire can fit through right here. So we wanna make sure we're not pinching any wires when we go to put this back on. Then we'll turn the printer around and we'll neaten up all our wiring and we'll get our motors all connected back up. All we have to do now is kind of neaten up our wiring once more and we'll do that with some zip ties. Super easy. We'll start right at the bottom. You don't really need to zip tie the stepper motor wire, but all the rest of them, we want to make sure they stay out of the way of the print bed when it's moving back and forth, right? We don't want to be rubbing on them, even though they have this protective sleeve on the wires. Um, we want to make sure that they're not kind of getting jammed up in here like this and whatnot. Pretty happy. I haven't had, I haven't been able to print silk in quite a while now. All right guys, so that wraps it up for this video. Super easy upgrade, I hope you enjoyed it. Consider hitting that subscribe button, that like button, uh, if you found this video useful. I got new stuff coming out all the time. Be sure to stay tuned. Till next time, thanks.